As women, half of our life is spent in menopause, so let's make the most of it. And this is how I changed things so I could enjoy it. Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Andre. I'm menopause Andre. <laughs> I'm probably post-menopause Andre. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about all things menopause. Well, I'm going to repeat everything that I have said before. I have made many videos not just on menopause, but well, I haven't made many videos on menopause, but I have spoken about my menopause in the past. I have made videos on my HRT. I have made videos on my fasting. And that's basically all the changes that I have made, my diet, that I have made to enjoy my menopause and to make the most of my menopause. I'm not going to tell you anything new or anything that you haven't heard before, but what I will say to you is you need to want to make the changes to enjoy your menopause. Okay, shall we get started? Have you pressed that subscribe button? If you had, then ding -a -ling my bell, which will remind you every time I upload a video. And please, a thumbs up is always very much appreciated and helps this little channel of mine, helps this menopausal woman. <laughs> okay, right. all that set and done. I have my organic red right here with me to keep me company while I basically repeat everything that I have said in all the past videos. Okay, so I started off the video by saying half our life as women is spent in menopause and that is so very true. If we are lucky enough to live on for years and years and years and years and I, by making these changes, am planning to live on for years without dementia, without a heart attack, a stroke, without getting fatter by the minute. Not that there's anything wrong. People, be you, be who you are. And if you feel great, then this video's not for you. <laughs> but I got to a point in my life where I wasn't feeling great and I needed to make the changes. My mum had dementia. I started doing research to <laughs> keep dementia away, to keep dementia at a distance because dementia and I, we are not friends people. I have seen what dementia does to a person and I've said before dementia is a thieving because it takes everything away from you. And listen, I may have lost the battle with my mum because I fought dementia every single day with my mum and her dementia. And it ain't, it's not coming this way, people. It's not if, if I can help it, if I can make the changes, it isn't coming this way. So why am I talking about dementia when we are here to discuss menopause? Because when I did my research on dementia, it brought me to HRT and through my research it showed that the lack of estrogen can, I say can, not will, can bring on dementia. The lack of hormones, they make a difference. Going back years and years and years and years, we didn't live this long. We didn't need the hormones. People, we need our hormones now. We are living much longer. We need them. I did my research, I did the pros and I did the cons on HRT. So I decided I needed and wanted to go on HRT. I decided that the pros outweighed the cons. So I'm now on HRT. I've been on HRT for years and years and years. I can't remember exactly. I am now currently, as I sit here speaking to you, I am 58 years young. <laughs> I can't really remember when I started my HRT. I was either 52 or 54, but I'll link my HRT video down below and I, I will probably have told you then what age I was. So the first thing I did to get me through this menopause was HRT. Did it make a difference? Yes, it made a massive difference. But as I got older, things got worse. HRT is not magic. It does not solve everything. It solved certain things. It made me feel better. It took away the night sweats. 
it improved certain aspects <laughs> okay i'm not going to get into great detail here but people you have an imagination use it so it did improve things in all seriousness it did improve things but it wasn't the magic portion so my HRT consists of just, it just consists of estrogen. I had a hysterectomy in my 30s. I explain all of this in all my other videos. I had a hysterectomy in my 30s. Therefore, I didn't need progesterone because I don't have a womb. Okay, so I just needed estrogen. Testosterone is another hormone which is advised that sometimes you need. It helps libido and other things. Over here, it's really, really difficult to get testosterone. I haven't gone down that road. I'm happy with my estrogen gel, which I rub onto my thighs every night. Okay, so I took my estrogen, but then there was other things going on. I, you know, start gaining weight. I started gaining weight. Weight was never a problem for me. You know, I, I suppose there was times I put on a few pounds and I would go on a diet and within days I would lose those extra pounds. It wasn't a problem. When you hit the menopause, when you put those extra pounds on, oh my goodness, they do not come off. You need to basically starve yourself for those pounds to come off. Then, of course, you're going to start eating again. What happens? You put those pounds back on and another two on top of that so gradually the weight goes on and on and on and on and on i didn't get massive but i got bigger than i liked for me or that i was used to for me so do you know what i accepted it i thought this is part of getting older i struck i honestly i did all the fatty daddy diets i did them all you name them i did cambridge i did keto i calorie counted oh people i did them all did i lose weight i did could i keep it off no the 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 diets that i did and i call them diets because that's what they were they weren't something that i could stick to i felt restricted I felt I didn't feel great doing them. I didn't feel good. It didn't make me feel good. So um I eventually accepted the weight gain and even started buying like I, I sized up by one size. Did I even size up? Yes I did actually. I started sizing up and so I was always a size 10, kind of a small size 10. And then I got to a big size 10, you know, where things were kind of starting to ooze out of a size 10. I'm a UK size 10. I'm five foot five. And then things started to ooze out of a size 10. Anyway, but I accepted it. Eventually I sized up and I accepted it. it's not a big deal. You know, I'm, I'm a size bigger, not a big deal. But it wasn't until I started feeling sluggish, tired, exhausted, inflammation, joint pain. Basically, I stopped feeling like me. I felt different. I didn't feel like me anymore. I, I really started feeling different. I started feeling old i still worked out because i'm a person that has always worked out i worked out throughout my life i worked out when i had my children when they were much younger i found a way of working out i worked out whilst i was working and looking after my mom i've always worked out working out has always been part of my lifestyle it's always been my thing it's helped me in many scenarios of my life it wasn't helping me keep the weight off in my menopause. Let me just touch, before we go further on, I just want to touch a bit on perimenopause as well. When I was going through my perimenopause, I didn't actually realise it was perimenopause. It's now looking back, now that I've been doing my research, I now understand everything that I was going through. So for me now, looking back when I was going through my menopause, again, 
bearing in mind I'd had a hysterectomy in my 30s so I didn't have a period every month I still had my ovaries so I still had my hormones so I didn't need hormone replacement therapy at the time because I was so young they decided to keep my ovaries so for me because I didn't have a period it wasn't like oh I'm not getting a period this month I'm you know every two months or it's been a year I didn't have any of that and life is busy I mean you're that age you know in your 40s which is probably when my perimenopause got hold you know you're, you're busy you, you don't have time to sit and think oh this is happening that's happening and da 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 and I didn't have like I said didn't have the peak the crazy period cycles and all of that so but but thinking back I remember like I remember have like my breasts feeling really tender or feeling ginormous. I don't have ginormous breasts, people, but I remember them feeling really ginormous. I remember going to the gym thinking, oh my goodness, I can't jump up and down. I can't do this because of the feeling. You know, some people through their perimenopause, their libido goes up, some their libido goes down. Now, everybody's different. The night sweats, they were oh my goodness when i tell you night sweats i mean drenched like somebody had poured a can of like water all over me it was like drenched you, need, you needed to get up you needed to change you were, you were soaking i accepted it i got on with it i plodded on as we women do so that was basically what i remember about my menopause so all this breast tenderness and all of that that was all like your hormones going crazy they were going hi i'm really here for you this month i'm going crazy i'm gonna pump it all in and then the next month they would go you ain't getting nothing this month basically that's what perimenopause is so then i hit menopause and for me the beginnings of my menopause i was looking after my mom with dementia so i had a lot of stress with that so the mood swings maybe were that i would have probably experienced through menopause were getting mixed up with looking after my mom and i didn't have time to think about it i got on with it i just got on with it as you do i was busy running a business looking after my mom and all of that got mixed up with how I was feeling for my menopause and just plodded on and got on with it, which is what my mum used to do and did not investigate. And that's what I did until I started investigating dementia and realised, going back to where we started here, realised that I needed hormone replacement. So did my hormone replacement, the hormone replacement did its thing. I plodded on with my hormone replacement and started accepting the weight gain, the tiredness, the inflammation, all that, accepted it as part of the cause. That's it. That's what happens when you get old. You know, you get fat <laughs> and all of that. Until I needed to do some bloods for one reason or another. I went and did some bloods and then realised that things were not good. Things were not right. I had a lot of things going on with me. I'm not going to tell you anything new in this video. Like I said, I've, I've told you all before. It's basically down to life changes. And life changes means life changes. Not for the next month or three months or until you start feeling better. You need to continue these life changes. And these, this is what I'm going to touch on now. So I had my bloods done and they came back awful. Basically I had high cholesterol. I had high ferritin levels. My thyroid levels were bordering underactive and everything else that was going on. So they weren't good. And I got the call from the doctor's surgery, which if you get the call and you haven't phoned up for your results and you get the call, there's something wrong. So I got the call to tell me what is happening. This, there's things, you know, you need to make changes. You really need to make changes is what I, I was told. The thing is, they tell you you need to make changes. Does anybody really tell you what changes you need to make? Right, I took my health very, very seriously from that moment onwards. I was a person, in my youth, I could eat anything. I, I wouldn't really gain weight. I, I, you know, I was a very active person and took all of that for granted. But I got to an age in my 50s when my body started shouting at me and it's saying, we cannot cope with all this all this skada you are putting into your body and i was i was putting a whole load of sugar and if you've been with me and watched the vlogs in the past you will remember the aldehols of wine gums of crisps of chocolates of biscuits 
oh awful 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 things which i would not touch now so my body was shouting at me and it was shouting at me by showing itself as inflammation as tiredness as weight gain as joint pain just basically feeling down oh, having naps during the day feeling like I'd lost me I had lost me I started to feel old through my blood changes I knew I needed to make the changes so I needed to make dietary changes it was I had to make dietary changes because my cholesterol was high so I needed to change things so I started researching I had to lower my ferritin levels because that's dangerous to have high ferritin levels so I started doing my own research for my own health is what I was doing and I hope if you're here watching this video I for some help that's what you're doing this is the most important message you need to do your research nobody's going to do it for you you need to do it for yourself the doctor's not going to do it for you but more than likely they're going to give you the tablet to fix it i did not want the tablet to fix it i didn't want the statins to fix my cholesterol i wanted to fix them myself so I looked at my ferritin levels and how I was going to fix that and why did I have such high ferritin levels? Why? Why was this happening to me? And I looked at it and I did my research. My research brought me to the fact that I had a hysterectomy in my 30s so I wasn't getting rid of this blood every month whereas I should have been getting rid of it until my 50s. I didn't but I was donating blood for a long time. Um, and I got out of the habit of donating blood. So I stopped getting rid of this blood. So that was one reason why my ferritin levels could have could have been high. So I had the genetic te test to see if I carried the gene, hemochro, I can't remember what it's called now. Um, I'll put it here. And I didn't inherit that gene. I never was for one minute believed that I had inherited that gene. But anyway, I hadn't in inherited that gene. So what through my research, I thought, right, I'm going to get back to donating blood every, I think it's every four months. And I started doing that. And that was about a year ago. And I had my blood done recently and my ferritin levels are now normal. Tick. So I have fixed my ferritin levels. And having high ferritin levels can bring on all that tiredness and all of that as well. So if you're feeling tired, what I'm saying to you is, if you're feeling tired, it's not because you're in your menopause, it's because you need to change something. You know, we, we kind of put everything under the umbrella of menopause, but our body tells us when there's something wrong. And it's not just because you're in menopause. So I now donate blood. So we have our ferritin levels fixed. And also I started checking ingredients because the majority of foods in this country have added iron in them. I, that's what was high in me, my iron levels. So I stopped eating shop bought breads because they all have added iron in them. So anything with added iron, I stopped buying for the house. In fact, it, I did anything I stopped buying at the time so I avoided anything with added irons in my diet so a lot of breads and I wouldn't eat bread unless I made it myself I then looked at my cholesterol levels and looked at a lot of things so I had decided that I needed to cut out all added sugars so i do not eat anything with added sugar in fact i don't really eat a lot of fruit either the only fruits that i tend to eat are um raspberries blueberries avocados and tomatoes they're the only fruits that i will eat now i've, I've never been a great fan of fruit so that's not a big thing for me but what I, the big thing for me was cutting out all sugars that made a massive difference to me and do you know with it it didn't take long to get my cholesterol levels down so I started eating porridge in the morning which I know I have stopped eating because I, I don't think it works 
for me. Um, I, I ended up with a rash around my mouth here and started cutting out foods to see what was causing that. It wasn't the porridge, but I realised that when I cut out the porridge, it made me feel better. So it's probably the carbs in the in the porridge. I don't think my body works with high levels of carbs. The other thing I was experiencing was um, like if it was almost like a craving for sugar and I would get the shakes and if I didn't eat something sugary I would end up very shaky and sweaty. Looking back that was me spiking my insulin levels. That was me going shh, 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 giving myself so much sugar that the insulin had to kick, kick in and I was probably becoming insulin sensitive as well. That was another thing I changed. So because of my iron levels I basically had to cut out breads. I'd cut out all added sugars or added sweeteners and anything in a packet. Basically, I would not and I still won't touch anything processed. I won't eat anything if I don't read the ingredients, if they've got a whole lot of additives, preservatives, sugars, fructose, glucose, all of these things in them, I won't touch them. It has to be how nature intended it to be for me to eat. That's how I changed my diet. And if there's one thing I'm gonna say to you, if there's one thing to change in your life is to cut out sugar. It's evil, people. It's an addiction. Cheers. That, this is a natural sugar. It turns to alcohol. It's fine. <laughs> in moderation, so Rico says to me. Everything in moderation. Cheers. <laughs> So, I now lower my carbs, I have, I, I eat plenty of vegetables, I won't eat cakes, I won't eat biscuits, I avoid them at all cost. I avoid them, it's very rarely that I'll have them, sometimes I'll have them, but it's very rarely, and it'll be a piece of something, it won't be a whole slice of cake. <laughs> The only whole slice of cake that I'll indulge in is my New Year's cake that I make on New Year's and it's got white bread and carbs and it's mad and it's got oranges and everything in it, but it's New Year. That's the only time I'll kind of overindulge in sugars and carbs and all of that. So making these changes not only made me feel good, I lost weight. I have my energy levels back. I feel like me, I feel young again just by making these dietary changes. I've introduced intermittent fasting. I like to do the 16-8. Most days I go over 16 but what I concentrate on is making sure that I fast for 16 hours. I sometimes introduce uh, autophagy fasting which I have to go over the 17 hours for which is cell renewal and it's basically the body turning in on itself and trying to fix itself and a lot of people say the body starts eating itself people it's complicated i'm not going to get into all of that there's loads of experts on youtube that will get into all of that if you want you, you, like i said you have to do your own research and when i do the autophagy fast i don't have coffee and i don't have tea so when I'm fasting I have black coffee black tea I don't add butters I don't add fats I don't do the keto coffee or any of that when I fast I fast and like I said I like to stick to the 16 hour fast most of the time and occasionally I'll do a 24 hour fast but the more you fast the easier it gets you don't start fasting and do 16 hours straight away you know you should start slowly 10 hours and start increasing it and it really does get easy i don't I mean for me fasting is just part of my life as is not eating sugar now as is not eating a lot of carbs i'm quite used to it i don't miss it and i've seen the benefits of it honestly i've seen the benefits of it you've got to want to do it and once you realise that it works, you just want to continue doing it. I mean, this is my way of life now. This is not for a limited amount of time. I enjoy my foods. I enjoy, 
I mean, when I break my fast, people ask, what the, how do you break your fast? What do you eat? What? And I get so many questions and this is why I'm doing this video again. Uh, when I break my fast, for me, it's, it's a wee feast at that moment in time. I want to enjoy it. I'm not going to break my fast when I haven't got time to sit down and enjoy what I'm going to eat. I'd rather n wait rather than break my fast and rush what I've got to eat. So I'll break my fast with avocado, um, salmon, a drizzling of olive oil, s topped with some rocket, uh, maybe with some walnuts or some sauerkraut. You're all looking at me going, oh, that's disgusting. No, it is tasty. It is real food. It fills you up. It doesn't leave you craving for anything else. So I have that. And I'm sitting and I'm eating. I'm normally myself at this point when I'm breaking my fast. Rico's out working and I'm watching something and I'm enjoying it or I'm watching something on the TV. And then I have my dessert, which consists of Greek full fat yogurt topped with some almonds and some chia seeds and all of those good things flax seeds all of that and some mixed nuts and berries my blueberries and my raspberries drizzled with peanut butter it's a feast and then i struggle to eat again because i am stuffed i am really stuffed after eating that and probably because my carbs are so low i'm probably in ketosis a lot of the time so i don't have that hunger i don't have that oh i need to eat with that that used to be me i need to eat i'm hungry i'm gonna get the shakes uh, i was forever saying that I'm gonna get the shakes i need to eat i can feel the shakes coming on but that wasn't because i was hungry that was because i was spiking my insulin levels my body was all out of balance like I said, when I was much younger, I could eat anything and get away with it. But the older I got, my body said it couldn't cope with it. And it showed me that with all the signs of the tiredness, the inflammation, the joint pain, the exhaustion, the mood swings, the I can't be bothered at attitude. Whereas now I'm up for it. I'm enjoying life. Like I said, we have half our life in menopause let's enjoy it let's make the most of it and for those of you that say life is too short not to eat the cake life is too short to eat the cake and on that note i hope this video has helped you let us know in the comments what you've done if you've made any changes let's get into a conversation let's help each other in the comments let's support each other here because life is about making the most of it and having that bar of chocolate <laughs> listen if you can get away with it if you can eat the bar of chocolate and you're not gaining the weight and you're feeling fabulous well done you i used to be that person i'm not that person anymore i can't do all of that exercise i've always exercised the main thing is diet you know people think if you exercise you're gonna lose weight it's not about exercise exercise is good for you it helps your mental health it builds your bone mass it builds your muscle mass it makes you feel good and all of that exercise is a big thing for me so for me it's all about incorporating exercise intermittent fasting and eating good clean nutritional foods it's as simple as that but you need to want to do all of that you need to want to make the changes you need to make the choices that work for you you need to do your research to find out what works for you all that said and done this is what's worked for me i'm not a health worker in any way I'm just sharing what has worked for me and has brought me to me again, feeling like me. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like to see any more videos from me, I'm going to link one here, here, and if you're not already subscribed, it's the A right here. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Remember, 
it's alcohol, the sugar's turned to alcohol. <laughs> Everything in moderation, people, except sugar. <laughs>